gentlemen, welcome back to the 51st edition of the National Young Fursha Contest. Now, let's welcome two of our next Young Fursha, Clarche Varmos and Alfiona Palacio from the Lycée, Lycée Michel Lucius. They will come on stage to present their project titled Does the Moss Grow on the North Side of Trees? Stay tuned if you want to find out whether the direction of moss growth can help you to navigate. Um, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Althiona. And I'm Clarcha. And we're talking about for today, it's about moss or in scientific terms, Bryophytha. Okay, it's the other way around. Uh, a Y and T. Okay. And <laughs> next. The main question of our project is Does moss always grow facing the north side of trees? Common knowledge says that moss grows to the north of side of trees. We decided to test this because we always strive for adventure. And we are both adventurous and dauntless, except for public speaking sometimes. Oh, so one day while we were walking on a sunny day, we thought of what if we get too adventurous to an extent that we get lost in a forest without anything. That's why we questioned if moss can help us navigate. We decided to test it ourselves to find out the most accurate answer. We started by choosing three different locations in closed areas, open areas, and near pond areas. And then the methodology. Most of the trees that we chose had moss only on half of the tree. And on the other half of the tree, there wasn't any moss at all. So we chose to measure on the middle part of the moss. So first, we would measure um, we would stick our stick into the moss and put our finger near the edge of the moss, and then we would, and then we would measure it using um, a ruler, and then we would, we would use a compass to determine which direction most of the moss grows. It's very essential, especially in this project. And next is the three things we made sure to always measure. We would always measure the time, the date, the temperature, and the humidity. Um, the result shows that most, the thickest moss grows mostly on the west side, and the least, the thinnest moss will mostly grow on the east side, following with northwest, southwest. And then we, would, we also made this graph to show that in the different places, which direction it showed. And for the exposed, all of them faced the northwest. And for the pond, some of them faced the southwest, and some of them just faced the west. And then for closed, it faced most directions, which is east, northeast, and northwest. Um, looking to the results, you've seen that this factors, the results are affected by the, these factors. It includes the location, the humidity, vegetation, and temperature. Comparing to the two different areas, the closed areas and the open areas, we've seen that there's quite different results rather than the near pond areas. And we've thought that it's, it may be because of the pond near it. And in conclusion, we learned that moss is not an accurate measurement of 100% of the time. But if you are lost, you could technically use it in exposed and a pond area. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome. Um, so we want to know a bit more about your project and uh, first question I think I would ask that um, uh, where did you get the inspiration uh, and the motivation for your project? It's based 
<clears throat> in our personalities. We are, especially her, she's very adventurous. And then just, as I said earlier, one morning we were walking and thinking about what we can do. And then there's like this tree, there's full of moss. And we thought, what if this, this, this would be the answer for it, so. Sounds good. And how did the teamwork go um, for your research? Did you have any specific roles in your team to, 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 to follow? Or how did that go generally? Uh, it was good. Everything worked okay. Yeah? Yeah. And um, when working together on that project, did you discover any surprises or unexpected findings? Yeah, there were some unexpected things that we didn't really think about. Yeah. Can you, can you just tell us a bit more about what, what, what happened? What was that about? Uh, what do you mean? Like, Examples of uh, surprising findings? Uh, well, we saw, found that we were surprised that in enclosed places that there wasn't as much moss like facing a specific direction. We thought that there might be more moss there because it's more dense and more humidity. And yeah. so that was surprising. And we thought, we've learned that there's a lot of types of mosses, like thousands. And it's just not one type. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you looked into whether certain types of mosses look into a specific direction and others in a different one? We haven't, we haven't been there yet. Could be something to extend your project maybe? Uh, do you plan to uh, continue working on your project and maybe participate in coming years again? Hopefully, hopefully yes. Sounds good. The, the, the base of your research and the subject, is that something you, you would like to uh, proceed further maybe for a future future studies or future career? Well, I definitely would. I really like biology and nature and I think I might want to become a biologist when I'm older. What about yourself? I don't know. <laughs> not, 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 not yet. Yeah, I think you still have a few years to go or something. Yeah, good to hear. Um, is there anything you would like to transmit as an, as an advice to other um, students following their projects, Any, anything you can tell them? Um, don't get lost in the woods. <laughs> Always bring a compass <laughs> so you don't have to use natural navigation. But hopefully in the future we could find out something more that we could use. Brilliant. Good. Yeah, then thank you very much for giving us some further insights uh, into your, your work and your future plans. And uh, we wish you all the best for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being with us today. And congratulations for your project so far. Okay, thank you. Thank you.